Good evening, everybody. This is To The Moon 671 representing New Kids on the Blockchain, Maganda Gabi. Good evening. And hopefully you guys had a wonderful Monday and a wonderful start to your week. Um, made this video uh, based, on the, uh, based on, you know, I just wanted to showcase uh, Flare Networks and Flare, Flare Finance. Uh, currently, Flare Network Networks is not out yet, <clears throat> but then it has uh, Flare Finance is, is, is a is an application that's out um, in support of the Flare Networks uh, once that goes live. Um, so I'm going to be showcasing Flare Networks, Flare Finance, uh, the app um, to kind of like show you how this works and also uh, provide you the information that you need to navigate through um, this new network. Um, so just kind of like bear with me. It's going to be probably a long one. I, I haven't really timed it. I kind of just set up like all the information that I want to talk about. So this video might kind of last a little bit longer than normal, right? So if I go over 30 minutes, man, just, uh, you know, just kind of bear with me. But there's going to be a lot of information, something like you guys could definitely use if you want to participate and learn a little bit about this uh, DeFi network. But overall, so far, um, I'm pretty impressed with the DeFi network other than the fact that, you know, the market's going down, Bitcoin's going down, Ethereum's going down, the whole market's red. I get it. Totally understand it, right? You know, markets need correction, especially with crypto. Uh, volatility is pretty crazy sometimes, but then, you know, like if you're set up correctly, you can definitely take advantage of the major dips and then you could take advantage of the major uh, spikes, right? So let's kind of like move forward from this, but then, yeah, to the moon, 671, here's my Twitter account. Um, if you have not... Um, ask for an invite or you know kind of like hit it up I, I definitely recommend that you do i do post a lot of information in uh twitter when i can uh, depending on the information i get from multiple sources so if you guys are interested in a different type of blockchain um, blockchain uh, projects out there um, i do get a lot of information because I'm, I'm subscribed to a lot of people so you know once information gets popped out depending on the information that i receive you know because i'm gonna have to decipher it make sure that everything's correct and you know like I, I usually post it if it all makes sense to me right so if i agree with it you know based on what i know based on my knowledge um then i would post it so i, I would share it to the people that follow me so you know hit me up on on twitter at clember81 to the moon 671 here's my profile picture uh, definitely I have like a, a bunch of wealth of knowledge and information that you know I, I pass down on Twitter and on top of that you know if there's going to be additional projects that do come out I do post them on Twitter so people can just like immediately take a look at it and if you guys want to participate in these these projects you know so be it so and also too I do like scam alerts too just in case I see like a post from like uh, one of my followers or one of the people that I'm following about you know certain things in the crypto space that seem like scams, um, I definitely put that up on Twitter too, so people can read it and just kind of be you know careful with a lot of the um, hackers and scams going on in the crypto space right now. All right, so that's my uh, to the moon six seven one, and going on to the next Twitter page, right? I just want to talk to talk about the Flare Finance Twitter page, right? So this is how it looks like. Uh, you can go in there, search them, find it. Um, once you get to their page. Uh, this is how their homepage looks like, and if you look down here, um, it says a flow page, Flare Finance. A lot of good read here, so you can actually, you know, you know, take some time and study the information that they're putting out in in regards to the upcoming Flare Network launch and the Flare Finance beta testing, um, which is kind of like pushing through the Somber Canary Network. And then once that's finalized, then the full-blown Flare Network will come out with um, all its actual assets. And on top of that, you can use XRP, Doge, XLM, Litecoin, and Algorand um, as a governance token. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Uh, but you can use other assets that have been approved by Flare Networks and Flare Finance once the actual network becomes fully blown live. You can take some of your native assets that you have collected in different blockchains like you know for example i own telecoin you know i own you know casino coin i own uh, shiba inu i own sanshu i own uh, gitcoin i own algorand so i, I you know what i'm saying like so there's a lot of blockchains that are going to be embedded into flare finance and it's going to give you the ability eventually over time to Earn some passive income, right? You'll, you'll earn rewards by you know staking your your native tokens in there, and then you'll get these rewards back. And then we'll basically kind of like go over the demonstration for that. So right now, currently at my time, 
here where I live, it's uh, currently 5 o'clock, uh, 5 p.m. So I just want to make sure that you guys like timestamp this, you know, today's date's January 10th, 5 p.m. Because once we actually go through this process and then we go into Flare Finance and start, you know, doing some of the functions in there um, and start, you know, claiming rewards, I just want to make sure that you guys know it's like January 10th at 5 p.m. Because tomorrow on January 11th, I'm going to make another video and I'm going to start off where we left off with this video and then kind of like show you guys how I collect the rewards and how I would manage my rewards based on the inventory that I currently have um, set up for just this tutorial, right? Okay, so that's Flare Finance. We're moving along. So if you click on this, it's going to take you to this web page. And then in this web page, you basically can like, you know, take a look at Flare Finance homepage, Flare Finance white paper. So you can read on that. I mean, there's a lot of information there. It might sound a lot of alien to you. I'm still studying it, still understanding it, uh, but definitely a good read. Um, so you can fully understand this network. Uh, you can actually um, get an invite through Twitter here or Telegram, right? Medium. Um, they also have a Discord. And um, you have the Flare Scan Block Explorer right here too. We'll, we'll go over that later. Um, so that's, that's when you click this, it will take you over here. And then over here is um, a little bit of information that's in the Flare Finance Medium. So if you click this, you're going to go into this page, right? And right now, currently, we are past these timelines. Uh, so we already conducted our snapshots. It's done. Distribution of XFi is already out. Um, understanding XFi, you can read a little bit more about it. I can, I'll go a little over about XFi in the tutorial, uh, but there's a lot of information to read, but I don't want to just like, you know, create this video and, and start reading stuff on the screen for 30 minutes. I just want to kind of get through into start showing you like you guys how to operate Flare Finance. All right, so the allocations of XFi, <clears throat> uh, total supply rate 110 million. Um, what got airdropped to all the SGB holders was 40 million. Yield Cloud, 40 million XFi. Foundations Reserve is 20 million. And team allocation is 10 million. Uh, biggest things about this uh, XFi experimental finance token, right? There's going to be some functions to it um, over time. So being used as a fee replacement token of FlareX, being used to farm for yield and form SFIN on Flare Farm, being used to create CAN on Flare Loans which can be optionally used to farm more SFIN. Additionally, the remaining four products are released. XFi will be used to purchase NFTs and participate in auctions on Flare Drop, provide to coverage pools and purchase coverage on Flare Mutual, vote on Flare governance and enact cross change across the XFi ecosystem. Okay, so a lot of stuff that's going on with this XFi token that just got launched and airdrop, right? So you can buy this XFi token. It's fairly cheaper now. Um, it's like, I think it's $5 the time, last time I saw it. But here's all the functions that it, it, it can do, right? So uh, being used as a fee replacement token for FlareX, uh, we'll talk about that. And then once I show you the application, how to use Flare Finance, being used to farm for yield in the form of SFIN on Flare Farm, we'll definitely show you about show you how that works. Uh, being used to create can of Flare Loans, which can optionally be used to farm more SFIN. I'll show you guys how to do that. And additionally, when the re uh, remaining four products are released, X5 will be used to uh, purchase NFTs. Right now, we can't currently do that. Uh, provide coverage to pools and cover uh, purchase coverage on Flare Mutual. Flare Mutual is one of the um, products from Flare Finance I'm definitely waiting for uh, because, you know, like X5 is, is, is definitely going to be driving that portion of the product for Flare Finance. So I'm pretty excited for that once that kind of launches. And then you can use your XFi um, to vote in Flare Governance, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in another lecture um, because Flare Governance, it's it's something that's kind of like, they already have the design for it, but then they haven't like executed it right now. So I'm not sure exactly how that works until I see it in the application on Flare Finance and then actually play with it with real monetary value using these tokens. So you can actually go through the medium and kind of like look through a lot of this information, right? So it talks about like DeFi oracles. It talks about loyalists, right? So it talks about some NFTs. Uh, this one is the DeLorean NFT that got launched earlier last year. And for the people that have it, right? When Flare Networks come out, um, you're gonna have like additional benefits. Um, it's being sold still. I think there's some people trying to sell some of their inventory 
Uh, I think the last time I seen it was about like five hundred to six hundred dollars for this NFT um, on Rarible, right? So if you know if you're interested in this uh, Delorean NFT, you could read on, on uh, you could read up on on it, and then also at the same time, if you'd like to you know obtain one of these. DeLorean NFTs, uh, the platform that you're going to be utilizing is, gonna, is, is a platform called Rarible. It's an NFT platform uh, mostly designed for Ethereum. So yeah, expect to like, you know, deal with some fees when you uh, try to purchase your DeLorean if that's something you want to do. And there's a lot of information in here. So kind of like just go over the medium. Like I said, all you got to do is go in here to the uh, uh, Twitter page and then go down to the flow dot page flare finance and it's gonna bring you this web page and then the medium is this right which is gonna bring you a lot of information that you can read on what's going on with flare finance and the somber network um, so the governance within the ecosystem right so the XFI in instance of flare finance will launch without a governance portal to begin with so currently right now there's no governance portal um, I, I can't really explain everything to you in regards to the governance portal because it's not out for me to test it. Um, but once it comes out, I definitely want to like share a lot of information with you guys. Uh, but just kind of like know that this information is on the medium. All you have to do is find it and kind of read through it, especially when you start playing with the network um, and start using um, mon you know, monetary value like, like the Songbird coin or the XFi coin. So just kind of heads up that this information you can read on the medium. And also too, there's a, a Flare Finance XFi network kind of like flow chart. Um, I'm just gonna leave it up here. I don't wanna read all of this information, but it's kind of like set up. So if you wanna go back to the video, you can pause the screen, kind of look through it and see uh, any, any information that you guys need or, or read upon, right? So um, yeah, this is gonna be the Flare Finance XFi network um, a block sheet. So I just wanna know it's out there. So if you guys need to find it, just let me know. Um, I can send you the link. So let's get into how to use Flare Finance, right? So like I said, um, once I start using this Flare Finance, I, I allocated about 2,000 Songbird into my MetaMask. And that's what we're going to use for now so we can see kind of like the pro progress that we're going to have uh, throughout the days and weeks. Um, just with the 2,000 Songbird I allocated into my MetaMask um, just for this tutorial and this progress of information all the way to a point for, you know, once you guys get comfortable and, and start seeing like results, uh, I definitely want to kind of like ensure that you guys see the results based on the work that I'm doing with 2000 Songbird. So just uh, bringing it up, uh, the MetaMask I'm talking about, so like I'm set up right here, I got 2000 Songbird, I got 0 0.3109, right? That's like little, but then I'm going off with the 2000 Songbird. I might use some of this for like gas fees, but then, you know, I got 2000 Songbird in this account under the Songbird network on my MetaMask. So if you're new to MetaMask and you haven't, you know, uh, downloaded MetaMask uh, and you want to set up your Songbird account, all you got to do is go into uh, the Flare Networks doc. Um, up here is going to be the web page, right? It's going to bring you into this uh, little section right here that kind of talks about how to connect your, your MetaMask to Songbird. So here's the information. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. So you go over here, back to your MetaMask. I already have my uh, account set up. I already uh, put in the Songbird network in my MetaMask, but if you're like starting and you, you don't have a Songbird network in your MetaMask, uh, you can just click on this little section right here saying Songbird, and then you won't you won't have any uh, network set up here. I think you'll, the only network you'll have here is the uh, Ethereum mainnet. Um, so I added already Polygon and Avalanche because I'm, I'm messing with Polygon, right? I'm, I'm kind of like experimenting with Polygon network and I'm experiment, experimenting with the Avalanche network. Um, kind of see like what's going on and what kind of passive income it can give me. Um, so I got those networks set up. Um, but then, you know, when you first start MetaMask, you'll probably only have Ethereum mainnet. And then to add the Somber network, because this, this should be not here, right? Like, you know, once you start your MetaMask up, if you don't have a Somber network, it won't be listed here. All you got to do is add network. So click on your add network. And then it's going to bring you this, you know, block information where you have to kind of put the data in. Um, where where the data was listed in the Flare Networks docs Flare Network file, 
Um, so here it is. Open your MetaMask browser extension. Unlock your MetaMask wallet with your password. Click on custom RPC in the network drop down menu and then enter the information, right? So Songbird, got it. So you put the network name in here, Songbird. Um, enter the RPC URL. So this is the, you know, uh, RPC URL for Tool Labs. You highlight this, copy, and paste it in here. Super easy. And then uh, enter the chain ID of 19. Chain ID, you stick that in here, it's 19. Um, enter the symbol, SGB, you stick that in here. Um, and it's gonna like put 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 it as a SGB token so you can see like the ticker on it, right? And the enter the block explorer. This is the pretty important, right? So you need this block explorer. Um, you copy this and you stick it right in here, okay? And then you basically save that information. And then once you save that information, it's gonna create you your wallet, okay? Um, now you're gonna have your wallet and it's gonna utilize the same address that you have created for your MetaMask, right? So this address up here doesn't change, but you did sync up a network. So if that coin goes from a different network all the way into your address here, it's gonna allocate, go through your um, sister networks that you, you added in, and it's gonna find that address to allocate that SGB into. So here's my SGB and it's 2000 i moved it from my uh, decent wallet where i keep majority of bulk of my my songbird and i, I moved 2000 out just uh, for the purposes of this video and uh, so we can basically kind of like grow together and you guys can see you know how this 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 platform grows value over time and the 2000 songbird um i think it's equivalent to Close to like 300 bucks. I think it was like around $290 total. So $290 I'm playing with right now out of my own money. Got it. Like for the tutorial, got it. Let's go, right? Let's roll, right? So the, everybody has seen how to create the Somber network on your MetaMask. Now, when you create your Somber network, um, you are going to have to add the asset into your somber network on your meta asset, right so you have to add the asset so the assets currently in flare finance that we're utilizing is sfin xfi rap songbird right nftps uh, that's from Bet best fdso and then d flare uh, currently based on the the new testing grounds uh, there is no more d flare to allocate to uh, as awards um, that's already done the pools over there was about a million d flare that was awarded out to the initial ver uh, version 2 Flare Finance participants. Uh, so I was able to farm my D-Flare. And the cool thing about my D-Flare right now, it's act it, it actually creates you know tokens by itself. So um, um, I'm kind of happy that I was able to farm the amount of D-Flare I was able to farm. I mean, it took a lot of work, but um, I got the D-Flare I need uh, for the future use of that token. Um, the only thing that I'm missing in here that I haven't added because I want to show you guys how to add custom tokens um, is CAND and the Canary Dollar CAND um, is the stablecoin currently for the Flare Finance under the Somber Network, right? When, it stays, when I say stablecoin, um, that's equivalent to uh, USDT and USDC. You know, so USDT and, USDT and USDC are two stable coins that a lot of people know about in the crypto space, right? Because that's what you utilize to convert to and send around and change it and buy things with it, right? Buy other cryptos with it. Well, the Canary Dollar is basically the same function within the network, okay? So the Canary Dollar is one of the tokens right now currently I haven't added to my wallet, but I want to show you guys how to do it, do that, okay? So <clears throat> when you guys go in here and you want to import your import a custom token, so you want to import a token, right? So now you bring up a import token page on your MetaMask. It's going to require you to have a token contract address, a token symbol, and a token decimal. Okay, so it's 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 not too hard to get it, but like I always get it from the source. Uh, you can go into the Songbird Explorer, right? So this is the website. Um, it's the actual blockchain network, um, like the actual blockchain network for Songbird, you can access it and see what's going on in the network. You can see transactions, you know, you can see the type of tokens, you can see the blocks 
um, that the transactions are made. Um, and it's very important to like go through this um, because, you know, if something happens within your transactions, like if something weird happens, you can verify your transactions and go back here and take a look at the blocks, right? And find your block and go in there and kind of find, you know, see like, you know, any abnormalities, which I know that I, there's not really a lot. Um, I haven't seen any. So um, I know people complain about stuff, but then I think people complain just based on the fact that we don't know what's going on fully with this network. Um, so you'll hear like people, you know, complaining on Twitter and you'll hear people complaining um, on other social medias like Discord um, because they don't really fully understand what's going on with this. So they, they feel like, hey, I'm, I'm losing money or, you know, I'm not sure what's going on with this. So they get frustrated. And what they do is um, emotionally trade, right? They go like, oh, well, Songbird's too hard. The Flare Finance is too hard. I'm out of here, right? And that's cool, right? Because like, i rather have smart money in this network, you know, actually making money than uh, emotional traders, emotional retailers in here just coming in, playing around and, and not understanding what's going on and just kind of pull the value out of there and right? pull the liquidity out because they just don't understand how to do it. But it's all good. Um, that's why I'm making this video for, you know, so I can show you guys like how it works. Um, and if you have any more questions about like um, the Flare Finance Network or the Flare Network in the future, uh, definitely hit me up, hit me up on that. So we're going to go to import the canary dollar um so like i'm looking at here so i got the x5 here's the address canary x i'm not worried about that that's another that's another project that kind of launched um and that has like a different utility to it but like you know some of my friends participated in it um trying to get some feedback on what's going on with that eventually over time uh, but then just kind of just kind of heads up like we don't really need this right now um, I already put in the Rap Songbird, um, I already put in the NFTP, I already put in the D-Flare, and I already put in the S-Fin. The only thing I got to put in now is the Canary Dollar, right? So all I got to do is click on the Canary Dollar, and then it's going to bring up your, your Canary Dollar page, right? Your, 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 your page within the actual blockchain network. So now you have the Canary Dollar. <clears throat> um, currently in inventory, there is about 9,638,340,000 Canary Dollars. And we want to import this into your MetaMask. So all you got to do is copy the address, go to MetaMask, paste the address in here. Super easy. Just double check the first four is good to go. Uh, so 70, al 70 Alpha Delta and you got 2176. 70 Alpha Delta, 2176, everything looks good. Good next thing, we're gonna go CAN. It already populated it since it's already out there. So um, immediately Ethereum virtual machine, the EVM has um, identified it and has populated the CAN and populated token decimal. Um, you might have a situation where you know, you put your contract address in here, but then nothing pops up, right? So like if nothing pops up, that's, you know, you go back and then you go like, all right, cool information I need. I need a token symbol, token symbol, mm, canary dollar, can, right? So you'll see that, can, got it, boom, done. And token decimal, uh, token decimal is 18, right? So all matches, good to go. All you gotta do is add the custom token and we are in, boom, done. We got can in our MetaMask. Meta so now we're gonna go back Go back to our account, got it, got my 2000 Songbird. I think I'm a complete set right now. I got my Songbird, my Espen, my X5, Rap Songbird, NFTP, Dflare, and Can. Cool, so I got a full complete wallet. Make sure your wallet looks like this before we start going into, you know, before you guys start going into uh, Flare Finance and um, um, participating in the network and seeing what it can do for you, okay? So what we're gonna start off is there, since I'm using MetaMask, um, because normally like Bifrost wallet is the best wallet for doing a lot of these functions because the Bifrost wallet's designed for the DApp Web3 um, Flare Finance and Flare Networks, right? So Bifrost was designed for Flare Networks and Flare Finance. And also Decent2 um, was also partnered up with Flare Networks and Flare Finance. So they um, kind of added the Flare Networks in the Decent wallet, uh, the biometric wallet, so you can like easily navigate through there um, to delegate and do the other functions that you can that you can do in the Flare networks. So for MetaMask, it's going to be a little different, but then um, 
I'm kind of showing you guys how it works. So, you know, it's going to be a little different from Bifrost because if, you know, if you have MetaMask and you don't have Bifrost, this might make all, all sense to you. But once you move from MetaMask into Bifrost and say like you want to use Bifrost now and see how Bifrost work, um, you're going to get spoiled with that because it's, it's very user friendly. A lot of the application menus in there is very user friendly versus um, using a computer to do all the work. All right, so with this, I just want to make sure that you guys have this um, web page um, because you're going to need this uh, FTSO AU uh, delegation beta um, because this is the web page that you can wrap your songbird and create what is called a WSGB, a wrap songbird. So you're going to change SGB to wrap songbird, right? Uh, depending on what you're trying to do in Flare Finance. So Make sure you guys take this uh, web page down um, and take a look at here, but you'll need this, okay? Uh, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the Flare Metrics, okay? So Flare Metrics, the way this works, and here's the web page for it too, is flaremetrics.io slash FTSO. Um, I use this tool to help me identify, you know, certain um, Flare time service oracles, that's what FTSOs are, and you'll see different names, right? AFTSO, FTO, FTSO IT, Alpha Oracle. There are currently 63 public signal providers in the delegation um, FTSO pool. Um, the reason why there's so many of these um, oracles is they all provide data to the Flare networks and they all provide data into Flare Finance, right? So. It's not centralized to a point where like, say, um, if there's only one Oracle and say, if this one goes down, right? Say if AFTSO goes down, you know, we lose data uh, signal to, you know, Songbird. So like all the monetary values like might get screwed up, right? So like, that's the reason why Flare Networks and Flare Finance came up with a solution where you had multiple different types of Oracles that provide data to the network in real time. So your monetary value, say if like, you know, three of these network, four of these networks go down, the other networks are gonna pick up, right? And provide that data signal um, to Flare Networks and Flare Finance to ensure the most accurate, accurate um, uh, information. So accurate, like, you know, values, accurate, like data, like, you know, how many tokens in the system and all kind of stuff, right? So um, it's gonna take information around uh, multiple platforms through these signal providers into Flare Networks and Flare Finance, um, and it's being you and it's designed this way just to ensure that if certain oracles go down, you know the entire network doesn't go down, right? So it's just like you know backups to a backups to a backups. Uh, the cool thing about the Flare metrics is that it's gonna show you all these different types of oracles. You'll have the different websites that you can peruse and see like different benefits that they're offering. Uh, depending on the delegations and we'll talk about the delegations um, so you can click on this website you can study a lot of them right um, it's pretty cool um, so these two right here are the highest delegation award givers okay so um, whoever is on top of the list is going to be the highest delegation givers and the, the way I want I could explain the delegation awards is that you can go in here, wrap your songbird, right, into the Flare FDSO AU, and then you can delegate it into these oracles. And say you wanted to get, delegate 100 songbird to AFTSO. Right over here is the award rate, okay? So it's 0.24 for every 100 songbird, right? So you'll get 0.24 every 100 songbird um, as a reward every single day per hundred songbird, okay? So if you have, say, um, if you have, say, five, 500 songbird, and you times that, so you use 500 songbird every hundred, right? So five times 0.246, um, you should be receiving at least 1.23 Somber a day. Okay, so it, it awards you based on the rate awards 
Um, every 24 hours, you'll get 0.24, uh, you know, 0.24 Songbird for every 100. Um, this one gives a little bit more, so it gives you 0.34 for every 100. This one gives you a little more at 0.32. Um, this one less, less, not too bad, less, right? So um, you can actually determine what Oracle you want to delegate to. If you're after Songbird and you want to delegate to the highest reward givers, I think the highest reward givers right now is currently FTSOIT and Alpha Oracle. Let me verify this. Okay, so far that's the only thing I see is basically FTSOIT and Alpha Oracle to be the highest yielders right now. So, um, something to know about the epochs, right? So once you delegate, um, the best time to delegate or re-delegate, right? Say, so if you want, if you were delegating here. Uh, for the first epoch, right? Because we are currently in epoch 16. So if you delegate right here and you're making your awards and stuff like that and say like Alpha Oracle became the top provider and then you're you're after like what the reward rates for Alpha Oracle is going to be, um, then you can undelegate from AFTSO, FT, AFTSO and then move that over to the Alpha Oracle, right? So you can undelegate from them and move it over here. Um, the best time to do that is before Thursdays. Um, because the Thursday is when they start creating the blocks to identify where the song, a uh, rap songbird is, and then it locks in your delegation for a full week. Okay, so uh, best time to uh, delegate is right before uh, Thursdays, and and then you get your rewards the next following Saturday. So, like for example, today is Monday. And Monday, so if I delegate something today, um, it won't lock in till um, Thursday. So the 10th, and then I won't receive my full rewards until the 19th, okay? So just because you delegated this Wednesday or this week before Thursday, um, you're not gonna get rewards on the 12th, okay? It's, you, 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 when you delegate and you receive rewards, um, you always, are going to receive your rewards. You can actually claim your rewards once a week um, on Saturdays. Okay, once a week on Saturdays, you'll have, you'll be able to claim your rewards once a week on Saturdays. So, kind of recap on that. We delegate today. I won't get a reward until the twelfth. Until, uh -huh. until the twenty second. I'm sorry. So the twenty second. And because I won't be getting anything on the 15th, so the 20 seconds when I get my rewards, um, if I delegate today, so just kind of heads up on that. And then, if you want to redelegate after you get your rewards on Saturday, the best time to redelegate is prior, prior to Thursdays, uh, so Wednesday, and then locks in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you will receive your rewards that following Saturday coming up. Okay, so this is the flare metrics. Um, Kind of, I just went over it real quick. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna delegate to AFTSO and we're gonna delegate to FTSO IT. Actually, I'm gonna delegate to IT and then the Alpha Oracle just because you know 2,000 Songbird. I want to definitely want to build my bag up, so I want uh, to match up with the reward rates for these two right here. So um, 0.32 for every 100, 0.34 for every 100 per day. Um, that should be solid. Hopefully, by the end, uh, you know, by the time I claim my rewards, uh, the following, not the following Saturday, but on the twenty second, um, I should be getting some Songbird back, right, um, on the twenty second. So this is the Flare Metrics IO. Um, the other one I want to show you guys uh, before we start is uh, Flare X. Um, this is the Flare Finance web portal. Um, it has the three products right in here. So you got FlareX, you got Flare Farm, you got Flare Loans already embedded into this. Um, the cool thing about this is that you can connect your wallet. We'll do that later. Um, it has a little chart right here depending on the pairs, right? So right now, currently, we have an SGB CAN pair, so SGB2 CAN. Um, currently, it's down right now, and SGB2 CAN, so one CAN. Um, one uh, 13 SGB to, to a can right now, okay? Um, if you flip it around and do a swap, uh, it's 7.6 7 SGB to one can, okay? 
So one can equals to 7.6503. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit more uh, strategies down the road. Um, I, every time I'm like, you know, update this video and you, you see the kind of like the progress that we're gonna have, I'm gonna show you how to use a lot of this information or a lot of these tools, um, try to like, you know, have a max benefit out of the network, okay? Um, also in FlareX, you have your li liquidity page right here. And then you can go in here and search pools. And my pool right now, nothing's popped up because, you know, I haven't connected my wallet. But once I connect my wallet, we'll go over that. And Flare Farm, you can go in here and farm. Um, once I connect it, right? And then Flare Loans, once I connect it, you can go in here and provide uh, some liquidity into the stability pool. Or you can deflare stake. Um, and or you can liquidate people right uh, if they're at a situation that they're gonna get liquidated because you know like over here you can actually uh, ask for a loan um, by collateral collateralizing your songbirds right so if you wanted to get a loan for like 500 canary dollars you would have to collateralize your songbird or your rap songbird um, as collateral to get the loan but then and then you have to pay it back but then say if there's a fluctuation in price action, um, if there's a, a major fluctuation in price action, um, then what's gonna happen is that uh, you can get liquidated, right? Because uh, depending on the amount of Songbird you delegate um, as a collateral, um, if you delegate less than the threshold of 150%, um, and then you know the price drops um, of Songbird, then you can get easily liquidated. That means you know um, they're gonna take you know money from you and then provide it to the actual liquid uh, liquidity pool providers, right? So the people that actually offering up the canary dollars as a, a loan tool for people to get loans from, um, they're gonna get paid off because you know the person that you know asked for a loan and got the loan couldn't you know fulfill their obligation and they got liquidated. Um, the profits from that are gonna be going to you. Okay, so just kind of heads up on that. And uh, we'll go over that later on. So this is the actual page and then the three products currently right now, there's gonna be a little bit more products as soon as we kind of move down the line um, with the Somber network and the development to it, uh, up to the finale of it, and then you know um, the launch of the Flare network. Cool. All right, so just a little bit about the defla uh, the deflare. So the deflare is a, a token that it's a DAO flare. Um, it's a token that you can you know eventually get right. So the way it's gonna work is that there's gonna be 40 million deflare that will be airdropped to holders of the flare token on the one month anniversary of the flare network main launch, right? So right now the flare network hasn't launched it's already past due right so um, the only time it's going to launch is when the Selman songbird network completes its final testing and then once the flare network gets launched uh, people are going to have to purchase the spark token okay so when you purchase the spark token you know, you're going to be entitled a month later to receive an airdrop of the flare now, depending on how much spark you're holding, I think I believe the ratio was 172 spark tokens to one D flare. So once spark comes out, um, it's going to be launched in hundreds of exchanges, right? The kind of, that's kind of like the roadmap. Um, it's all going to be dropped and launched at the same time when it launches in hundreds of different exchanges like Coinbase, KuCoin, anything, right? Like you, spark won't be. An asset that it's gonna be that, that that's gonna be hard for you to get. If you have Coinbase, you're gonna be able to get Spark. So just kind of heads up on that. Um, so you can still get your D Flare um, depending on how much Spark you have. So like it's 172 Spark for one D Flare. All right, let's go. So let's go get started, okay, guys. So um, what we're gonna do is take a look at our inventory and kind of think about what we're gonna do. <laughs> All right, so I'm um, looking at my inventory of 2,000 Songbird, I got it, and then I'm looking at my Flare metrics, and then we talked about I need I wanted to put into FDSOIT, and I wanted to put in Alpha Oracle. So now I have to like wrap it, because the only way you can delegate this is if, if, if it's wrapped, right? You can't delegate just regular Songbird, you have to wrap it and then delegate it to these Oracles. 
So I'm gonna go back into the FTSO AU uh, web app. I'm gonna connect my wallet. So my wallet's connected. Um, it's already verifying how much Rap Songbird I have. Let me see. Uh, let's go refresh this real quick. Okay, let's wrap it. And so over here, my wrap, I have 2000 Songbird and I want to wrap, you know, whatever amount I want, right? So let's go test uh, a little bit in here. So I want to wrap, say, a thousand. Okay, let's go wrap a thousand. So wrap a thousand. So I want a thousand songbird. Wrap it out of my 2000. Wrap it. And in here, you'll take a look at wrapping a thousand songbird. You're going to receive a thousand wrap songbird. Okay, wrap it. MetaMask will pop up. Um, you're going to verify your, your confirmation, your transaction. Um, you're going to verify that, look, um, the gas fees right now is only 0 0.06 Songbird, right? So um, super tiny gas fees. Confirm it. And it's going to kind of load until it's done. You can also bring up your MetaMask wallet if you're kind of curious what's going on. Okay, so it's good, right? Now, my Songbird's changed. My, my, my actual Songbird account, uh, amount has changed. Now, let's go back to assets and, and verify. Uh, okay, so I had 2,000 Songbird now. I wrapped it with an FTSO AU uh, wrap beta. I got it. I got my wrap Songbird. So my address I put in was correct. Um, it allocated the thousand rap song over here, so I'm gonna go with that. Now, let's go delegate, right? So let's go delegate, and um, so we can make more songbird. Okay, so I'm in the delegation page now. I need to figure out uh, which ones I want to delegate to. Now I'm over here. FTSO IT is one of them I want to delegate to, and I want to begin. Okay, so I'm gonna go begin. I'm gonna have to choose a provider. And we agreed that FTSO IT is gonna be my one of my picks, right? FTSO IT. Uh, where are you at? FTSO IT. Okay, I found it. Got it. That's one. And the other one I want to delegate to is Alpha Oracle. So Alpha Oracle, right here. Okay. Now, I got two delegations, right? Because you only can. You can only can pick two. You can't pick like five or 100, right? You can't pick like all of them, right? I wish I can. I, I wish I can delegate to every single one of them or multiple run. Right now, currently, you only can delegate to two. So once you get that done, um, you configure it. Okay. And so I have a total of 1,000 rap songbird, right? So 1,000 rap songbird is what I got. And if I do a 50-50, that means, that means um, this is gonna get 500, right? This is gonna get 500. And, and then I should be getting my rewards from that. And once that's done, you just confirm. Are you sure you want to, your delegations are correct? So double check your information. So it's a, a total of 100% of the 1,000 Songbird, 50% in FDOSLIT. On 50% Alpha Oracle. Got it. Let's delegate. I'm gonna kick that box. Delegate. Uh, fair. You know the gas fees. 0 0.07 Songbird. Super small. Let's roll. We're just waiting. It's all good in the zoo. Life's good. Nope. Once delegated, we're good. Mm. 
I'm just waiting on the Alpha Oracle to finish off its process. I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, sorry, I gotta confirm again, sorry. Something went no. Something went wrong. Okay, complete now. Got it. Let's go do it again. Just double check everything. Make sure everything's good to go. So delegate. I got that. Um, the other one wasn't able to delegate. Uh, so you have to kind of just double check and make sure everything's good. I, I think what I, I messed up on is uh, doing the second transaction. So, so we got IT and then Alpha Oracle is the one we're missing. Alpha Oracle, Alpha Oracle. Am I missing it? Where is it? Okay, configure. Okay, so now I have my two oracles, right? IT and Alpha Oracle. I got 50% of the thousand. Um, so 500 here and 500 here. So we are good to go. I am delegated. And then you can verify your awards over here. Um, after you get, we get to the week that we can actually claim it. But you can actually see the rewards start to grow. Um, hopefully starting like Thursday, Friday, you'll start seeing the rewards growing um, over time. And then the only time we're able to claim it is on Saturdays. And then our first claim will be on the 22nd. So I'll definitely make a video when we do that. So now I delegated that. Now I have 1,000 Songbird left. Okay, so now I got my delegation in. I got 1,000 Songbird left. Now what do we do with 1,000 Songbird? Okay, so we can go into our Flare X and participate in Flare Finance. So let's go see what we can do over here. Um, I'm going to connect my wallet. I'm going to refresh this. Connect my wallet. Okay, so now it's showing that I have a thousand Songbird in here, okay? So now I have a thousand Songbird. What do we do with a thousand Songbird? So if we go into the Flare Farm, um, there's some areas here we can participate in, kind of see like what's going on. All right, so here are your different pools, okay? So I have Songbird. Um, I don't have any SFIN. I don't have any X5 right now um, because I started with 2000 Songbird. Um, I have, I can wrap it and I can earn SFIN so I can do this. Um, I can flare exit for canned and do this if I wanted to. Um, and that's about it I can do for now that's safe, right? I mean, I could do the SGB can um we can do a little bit of that kind of show you what's going on with that okay um but right now based on canned um i'll explain a little bit about canned to you guys but then you know when you're doing like pair pulls with canned be really really careful okay because a lot of people this is where a lot of retailers get messed up on okay is the canary dollars are one for one right so like imagine canary dollar one dollar is one dollar that's it like canary dollar is a dollar okay um, it doesn't change in price, okay? Um, 
So if you lock in, like, so if we do a flare swap, a flare X swap, and I wanted to create canned, right? So say like I wanted to make $10 for the canned, it's gonna cost me about 77 Songbird to make that, okay? Just because of the price of Songbird is low. Now, or if I just do one, so 7.7 .7 Songbird is one equals to one Canary dollar, okay? That's a $1, 7.7 Songbird can fit in $1, one Canary dollar. Now, this is where a lot of people get 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 wrecked okay is say i wanted to mint um some canary dollars right here right so i'm, I'm spending you know 7.7 .7 songbird out of my thousand at 13 cents a piece to create one can okay so now imagine this if this price pops up say to you know 50 cents now I got this one canary dollar that I swapped for one SUB, okay? If this pops up to 50 cents, I just lost out on my SUB because I trapped the value of 7.7 .7 in one can during a drop, right? During a floor price. Now, the best time to mint can is say you're watching the charts, right? This is where all the skill sets of trading and all the skill sets of investing comes in. So I'm following the charts, right? So I build my chart and I'm estimating right now on January 12, right? Based on the bull flag that I develop, based on its current support and the current resistance I'm looking at, I'm looking at, right? You guys can have, you know, your own different resistance and supports, but this is my support and this is my resistance. Don't, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This all works for me. This is my strat. I understand how to like work these charts my way, my own way. Um, so... I'll be waiting over here till the the 12, right? If I want to be safe with can, um, there's a possibility that you know Songbird may be able to touch the support at you know 0 0.14043, uh, but there's also a chance it can break out of this bull flag and start making its way back up to 17 cents to test the resistance. To me right now, it, it's not worth it, right? It's not worth creating canned. Um, right now because I'm gonna lose some can I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lose some songbird um, Especially if this thing pops up, right? So if this starts going up uh, I got to swap my can back to songbird or the more it keeps going up then the more you know Songbird I lose based on the value I swapped with right so I started off with 7.7 .7 for one can but if the price goes up, you know when I swap back to songbird at 50 cents for example I'm only gonna get two songbird back so I lost five Songbird in the process because I didn't pay attention to the charts and the price value. And now I lost, you know, five Songbird, Songbirds in the process. But the cool thing about it is that if you do take your, you know, take the chance and you do mint can and you go into your, um, your pool. Um, like let's say the SGB can pool. And um, you're going to be creating this SPIN, right? Um, you're going to get awarded this on the daily, right? So basically, whenever you want to claim, you can claim it, you know, every hour, every two hours. It doesn't matter, right? Um, it's going to create you SPIN, right? Um, and SPIN is basically the re reward system right now. And this has a value. And let's go take a look at the value of the SPIN right now. So Canary Dollars, and then let's go say SPIN, right? So right now... For one, for one S fin, it's one S fin's worth two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, right? Two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars because remember, canned is a dollar, and so um, two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars for one S fin. So like during this pool time frame, um, if you look back into your Flare Farms. so slow I'm going to flare X and see what's up with that okay good let's go to flare farm see what's up with that I don't know what's going on with this probably loading give it some time
taking so long. Layer X. Again, exit out of that. I don't know what happened to that. Are you still recording? Yes, bro. Here it got slow for some reason. I'm running on 5G, don't know what happened here. I'm gonna pause this for technical issues. Stand by. Okay, so I'm back. Um, got the technical issues set up. I guess like I had some issues with my internet connection, kind of lagged out. Uh, but it's all good. So I got a thousand songbirds still, and um, we were going over what the can is. Hopefully, I kind of lost my train of thought when I was trying to fix my technical difficulties. Um, but if you guys hopefully understood what was going on with that in regards to like, you know, if you mint can depending on the value of songbird, and at that moment in time when you lock that value from you know songbird to can, um, if the value goes down then you can swap back to can right or to somber because you're going to make more somber because if the price goes down you know it's like doing a uh, um you know like you're, you're you're betting against the market going down so if it goes down say like two cents so like if you bought it at 50 you know if you minted with 15 cents and it dropped down to 13 cents that would be the best time to exit the pool that you have canned and swap your can of somber right to take advantage of you know that value of getting more somber for the uh, for the canary dollar now if the price action goes up um, you definitely want to start you know removing your can out and then swapping it back to songbird um, because the higher the value goes um, the more songbird you're going to keep on losing right so just kind of heads up on that um, I think the tolerance that I can deal with is at least like you know two to five percent right so two to five percent depending on how much I put in the pool um, two five percent increase of price is where you know my limit's going to be to exit out of can and um, go back into Songbird or swap you know do a Flarex swap from from can to Songbird and 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 once it peaks up at a at a, a solid value um, say like if it peaks up at eighteen cents and then I can see the signals based on my charting um, if it starts to like if say if it breaks through the resistance and then hits at eighty uh, eight uh, 18 cents and then the RSI verify it's like over overbought uh, most likely a lot of traders what they're gonna do is take advantage of that price action and they're gonna start dumping right um, best time to exit or um, this is the best time to mint your can right when it pops up mint your can up here uh, where the RSI is oversold and then once it's oversold um, mint your can up here because like the, what the traders are going to do they're going to try to bring it down right because they want to take profits and then rebuy it back in at a good entry price um that's how they're going to keep flipping their sgb and how they're going to keep making more right so if it does pop my signal you know just like for you guys is that i'm going to mint around the 17 18 cents right um because this resistance if it breaks through it, it this is going to be my new support uh, breaks through it so it might come back and test at 17 but it might break down and test like somewhere between 15 or maybe touch the support level of 13 so if it goes down i can still leave my can in the pool because the more it keeps going down um the more sgb i can mint from my canary dollar that i um, um i locked in value up in here okay so just like another strategy i use if it goes up mint your can up here if it goes down change back to songbird if it goes back up mint your can goes back down change the songbird so while you keep doing that you're you're increasing your position in the songbird right like in your bag um you're gonna make more somber this way if you do this strategy over time okay so just kind of heads up on that 
but I'm looking at a bull flag of January 12. So hopefully it gets over to this point somewhere, pops out of here um, and starts to make its way back up and test this resistance right up in here. Okay. So that's why I said like a lot of this, uh, you know, a lot of like managing flare finance, you definitely have to have like some fundamentals in chart reading and understanding like price action and all that kind of stuff. So um, definitely will keep you busy, um, especially if you have a lot of money in it, right? Um, so let's go back over here and let's go determine what we're going to do with the last 1000 somber, right? So let's go like, um, let's go let play safe a little bit. So I want to do the, I would say wrap somber, right? Let's go do wrap somber to S fin. Um, so I have a thousand, so I need to wrap it. Got it. So let's go to flare X and or let's go back to this one and let's go wrap the last remaining thousand oh actually like 999 i want to because i need to at least at least you know at least, actually let's go wrap 900 you know 95 because i need like at least five songbird for like transaction fees right like it's very minimal but then i just need at least like five songbird to like be over here because it uses this as a transaction fee so Let's go wrap um, 995. So I'm wrapping that right now. 995, got it, boom. And let's confirm that. Okay, so now I have remaining of five somber in here, and I got a, a, a balance of nine, 1,995, right? So I got 1,000 um, and 50 50% in the delegation pool right over here. So that's where my 1,000's at right now is 50-50, uh, but then I still have 995 left, right? So um, we can go back to Flare Farm. Oh, actually, let's go back to Flare X and then create the liquidity for that. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Flare Farm because it's only wraps on bird. So wrap somber and I'm over here and let's go allow this. Taking some time right now. Pending. Got it. It's pending, it's pending. Okay, so successful transaction, we're good to go with that. I don't know why it's not finalizing over here um, but it said it's successfully trans let's go like refresh this page just to just double check make sure everything's good to go yeah so that's why i don't like about metamask right like it it, it, it does that like a lot so um let's go flare x flare x is pretty easy i'm gonna have to like probably exit this again and go back in and for some reason like it won't connect my wallet So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to exit out here, open back up, put that in there, click on that. Okay, let's disconnect this account, got it, boom. And 
let's go start that back up. So you're gonna have to like probably do this a couple times just because like MetaMask sometimes acts up. All right, we're back in. Woo! And then let's go back to Flare Farms. And let's go start staking, right? So I activated the pool and then we're gonna start staking. So like, what are we gonna stake? We're gonna stake 995. Uh, let's go stake everything. One, nine, nine, five. Let's go stake nine, nine, five, like we originally planned. Okay, so we got 995 in here. Because the other 1,000 we put into the delegation. Um, I'm going to test a little bit from this just to see how this one works because, you know, I'm pretty surprised why I still have 1,995. Um, let's go see if I can stake the other 1,000. If I can, that would be great. And then at the same time, if we can delegate, that means we're going to make, like, multiple awards just from the two delegations that we have with the 50 50 and then you know if i can stake the other thousand i'll do that right now too so let's go verify that um this is where like it's starting to be slow okay so it's saying it's done but it's loading so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get is it out here again open back up i can do this whole thing again i'm gonna have to like you know, to make sure it's not connected, Flare Finance, boom, 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 got it. And then go back to the Flare Farm. Oh, this is a lot easier on Bifrost. I, I mean, I don't have any problems with Bifrost. It might lag a little bit sometimes, but like not like this, though. I'm sorry. Not connected. Let's go get out of that. Got it. Open. Let's go put that in there. If there's, if there's so automatically connected. I don't know how that's possible, but you know, um, let's go in here and verify if it's connected. Got it. All right. Let's go to Flare Farms and let's load, baby. Come on. All right. Okay. Let's allow. Okay, so I already have in here, so 995, we verified it, cool. So right now it's stake, okay? So you can verify how much SFIN that you're making by scrolling right over the zeros. Um, and then you can see already like just putting 995 Songbird, I already created this much SFIN, okay? Um, we're gonna leave that here for 24 hours. I'm gonna come back tomorrow um, around like 6 p.m. on January 11th and see how much that you know how much we made right and at the same time we can adjust uh, depending on what you know other pools we can play with uh, depending on how much we make from you know delegating for 24 hours or staking here for 24 hours so let me see if I can change this into a thousand stake all of it you know what I'm saying yo it's gonna cost me 1.7 shoot let's do it bro Let me see. I'm gonna have to do that whole thing again because just because it's because the thing is laggy. So it's pending. Okay, good. We're done. And we have a 1955. Let's go back over here and verify our wrap and the, our delegation. So I still have 5050 in here. That's kind of cool. Um, so um, this is so this is making awards, right? And my flare farm. So this is making awards now. And if you go to your wallet, um, your SFIN, um, I think I got a little bit of SFIN, um, just you know, just a little bit of it. So um, you know, it doesn't really show here because it was like a point zero 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 zero, right? So um, we're gonna have to like like farm this a little bit and then see what we can pull off with 2000 songbird starting today okay 
Um, so we're gonna go back in here. This is the only pool I, I have right now because you know I only have 2,000 Sombers, so we're gonna play with this. It's a little safe um, because I don't wanna mint any can to do any of these yet um, because right now, like I said, the price of Songbird is at 14. It can either touch support um, right over here, which is like, you know, it, it's, it won't be worth it, right? Like if it goes down to 14, it pops back up. It's, it's kind of like worthless. But if it does pop up over here, this bull flag and goes over here, then um, I'll be hurting myself. My inventory will start getting smaller with Songbird. Um, but I'll still be, ma be making S-Fin. But, um, you know, like depending if, you know, how ne negligence I, ha I am in regards to like, you know, watching the price action go up with canned, um, without switching back to somber, you know, definitely definitely is not a good idea. So uh, uh, right now I'm not going to do the any of these can pulls yet um, because I want to preserve, you know, the amount of somber I have. OK, um, but definitely I know I'm making Espen here and definitely I know that I'm making um, somber, more somber from these two right here um, on, a, on a seven day uh, cycle. And so that's about it, right? Like it's 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 pretty simple, right? Not not not. I mean, it's like pretty complicated if it's gonna be your first time kind of dealing with this. Uh, but just kind of heads up, like you know, if you have any questions in regards to you know like the processes or the steps, um, just let me know. Um, but that's majority of it, right? Just you know, like you're gonna have to like you know figure out what pools you want to go in here. Um, you can buy X Fi or starting off with just Songbird to keep everything simple. So like eventually, I'm gonna earn this. I'm earning S Fin already. And I'm earning Songbird and then, you know, depending on what I'm earning on a weekly basis, I can change that and then, you know, buy some x fi or buy some, you know, um, uh, you know, yeah, so I can buy some x fi or I can, you know, buy some more S-Fin and stake it in the S-Fin pool, right? So um, I can claim the rewards in S-Fin and then I can put the rewards in here so I can claim more S-Fin. So I can have like two pools farming more S-Fin, right? So that's how you compound interest or you compound your your rewards right so whatever you're making out of here and then whatever you're making out of here within seven day period um you can take that you can take profits and you can sell back out you know i mean like two thousand sombers ain't, ain't gonna make too much but um you can also compound it over time so whatever you get as a reward you can put it on top of that to um, have more power in farming more spin right so compounding like that's what i do a lot it's just i just i like to compound right until uh, a parabolic move in the market, you know, happens, then I'll start taking profits. But right now I'm just kind of building my ecosystem and just really building my proficiency in the Flare Finance and the Flare Networks. Uh, but currently that's all I have in regards to just kind of like setting up 2000 Songbird. And then from there, you know, we'll watch the 2000 Songbird do its thing. And then from there, we'll just maneuver and then, you know, like probably get some NFTPs or NFT, uh, NFP, uh, NF. You know nfts and nftp points from best ft so i can show you guys that later um, but that's gonna be a full seven day process for that okay um so yeah we talked about that talked about that talked about flare farm so we're all good to go and i just want to kind of like show you real quick um a video from the actual uh Founder of Flare Networks, um, with his thoughts of what's going to be happening with the Somber Network over time. Because, like, I want to let you guys understand that this is a test network for Flare Networks. Everything I'm doing now is mi preparing me, right, as the retailer, as the user, right, um, to ensure that I know what to do when Flare Networks come out. Because this is a very robust, very dynamic network. Okay, this is not just a simple network where you just put some stuff in there, you stake it, and you just watch stuff grow. Right, there's multiple ways. Um, you can maneuver around here with different strategies, okay? Um, yeah, so here's the video, and let's roll. Songbird's role in the rollout and kind of how you feel, how you feel it's going, and then and 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 the long the longer term role of Songbird. Hey, so, so I'm gonna so, pause this real quick, All right? So this guy right over here, he's the Uphold uh, member. Um, he works for Uphold, one of the uh, U.S. exchanges, and this guy is Hugo. He is the actual founder and CEO of Flare Networks. Um, Songbird is the canary network for Flare. Uh, you know what? What we've stated is 
uh, you know, the canary in the coal mine. Uh, so Flare has three key protocols, uh, really. Um, there's the state connector, which allows uh, state from other networks to be used by smart contracts on Flare or Songbird. Uh, there's the FTSO, which already exists and which people are staking to, which is uh, Flare's native uh, Oracle system. And then ultimately there's then the F assets. Uh, and that is the, 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 the asset from XRP, Litecoin, Stella, et cetera, on, on, on Flare. Um, and those are those three protocols kind of interlock. And it's quite a complex system. Uh, there's a lot of testing we, we need to do. Songbird is like the ideal place to do that. The reason being is because, you know, uh, we've, we've, we've told people, you know, it's, it's, it's a, has some risk embedded, uh, but it, it, it isn't a test network. It's, 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 a, it's a sort of form of a main net uh, that's used for testing. Um, and so that then allows us to get those protocols into the right shape to launch Flare into you know, a, 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 a production sort of a network that we are much more comfortable with uh, in, in terms of you know, saying that, uh, yes, we're, we're happy for you know, large amounts of money to be put through the F assets on Flare. Um, you know, we certainly would not say, you know, risk your life savings on the F assets on, on, on Songbird when they go live immediately. We certainly not advocate that anyone does that. Um, so that's the role of Songbird, it's the test of technology. Having said that, uh, you know, we know that the base, the, 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 the base uh, EVM chain and the FTSO, you know, it's sort of sh fairly stable now. Um, and so there's quite a lot of utility that we think people could build on top of it. And we think, well, you know, we'll, we'll start to build on, on top of that. Um, and so then what's, the, what's really the, lo the long-term sort of utility for Songbird is, is we've positioning it, we think of it as this long-term network where governance-led changes that are voted on by token holders on Flare are implemented first so that it gets all of the new technology that you know Flare Foundation and, and any, anyone else basically proposes and accepts. Um, and so that gets that six months to a year in advance or however long. Having said that, it will have a disparate group of token holders over the long term. And things like the state connector present a myriad of potential opportunities that people could build applications for. So to give you an example, on Flare, we use the state connector, you know, principally, you know, we use it, anyone else can use it for a different manner, we use it for the F assets. Uh, but you could use the state connector to do a number of other things. One of the things you could do is because you can see what's happened on another network, you could take the price from the FTSO, you could maybe stake against that price on in a smart contract on either Songbird or Flare, uh, and you could say, I'm gonna deliver that price to another network like Ethereum. You got yourself a decentralized Oracle. Then the state connector can see whether you delivered that price whether you delivered it at all, whether you delivered the right price at the right time, uh, whether you did it honestly. And you can then have automatic smart contract controlled slashing, and then you've got yourself an Oracle protocol. Really interesting, like cross-chain Oracle protocol. Uh, it's not something we're building. It's not something we're thinking about building. It's some. It's an alternative thing that we're thinking about. Like, you know, what can the state connect to be used for? It's an endless amount of potential use cases, and loads of stuff we haven't thought of. That's what I think. You know, if, if you ask me, what what is Songbird? It could completely diverge from what Flare is doing with the state connector, and it could be a home for completely new and different use cases. Entirely up to the token holders. Entirely up to developers. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, it's the, the like empowering people to build. Yeah, something that you don't have to build is kind of the, the really cool, the really cool part of all this. Yeah. So that that concludes, right? So Hugo basically said that, like, hey, you know, this technology right now, it's it's so advanced, right? Songbird's, um, yeah, it's a canary network that is being used to test the apps or different applications to go into. The final, you know, product, which is the Flare networks with the Flare finance being into it. But then since Songbird is a full blown network, you know, um, eventually over time, it can develop into something bigger. Right. Um, especially this XFi token um, that it has. Uh, definitely. It's a new tech type of token um, that a lot of the app developers are 
pretty excited to use over time. And, you know, like you said, it's um, uh, biggest part of Songbird is going to be the governance of voting into what um, different applications or different designers, you know, um, if they want to go into Flare and then um, have their products in there uh, to be, you know, used by retailers. Um, they're gonna have to go through the freaking gate, right? And the gate, the own, the, the the person with the keys and the person with the door, you know, that allows you through is is Songbird, right? The Songbird network is gonna allow these people to get through. So they have to test through the Songbird network. They have to prove themselves in the Songbird network. And then once they prove themselves and the product is safe and ready to be, you know, pushed out to like the masses, um, then they're gonna integrate with the Flare networks and Flare Finance through them. Um, but then, you know, the Songbird users, the Songbird network definitely are going to get all the, you know, um, early entries of uh, all these different products that's going to be coming up that needs to be tested prior to going to Flare. So I just want to make sure you guys understand how that works. Um, so that's all I got for the video today, guys, man. I know it's long, but then um, my computer had some issues. Um, I think it's MetaMask. I don't really like MetaMask, but then um, it's going to be a pain in the ass to use my Bifrost wallet and doing the mirror imaging, you know, to my computer. So I didn't want to deal with that. And I just want to deal with MetaMask. A lot of you guys do have MetaMask maybe. Um, and maybe a lot of you don't have Bifrost. But then um, if you want to use Bifrost and just let me know um, if you want me to make a video for that. Um, it's going to be the same process. But at least this one kind of like went through the fundamentals of Flare Finance, the pools. Um, kind of like using a little bit of the charts, understanding price action. Um, knowing where to find the resources that you can read in regards to what's going on with Flare Finance and the Flare Networks. Um, definitely, you, you guys want to do your homework, right? If this is something that you guys want to get into, um, definitely do your homework, understand what's going on with it. And if you have any questions, right, we have the community, you might hit me up on Twitter, um, hit me up on Facebook, right? Hit me up on Messenger, you know, send me a freaking email. I don't care, right? Like, it doesn't matter as long as I know that somebody out there is in need of like an assistance, right? Don't be shy. Don't be prideful. It's all good, right? Um, and a little bit about my journey. It was tough, man. When I started crypto, I, it was just basically me. Um, I think Al, you know, my one of my homies, man, it was just basically me, Al. And then we were trying to figure all this stuff out ourselves, man. It was hard, bro. Like, I didn't, we didn't have anybody to look, in, you know, look, look up to that's been in the space for two, three, four, five years. Um, but, you know, definitely I want to give back, right? I, I definitely know that feeling of you know being uh alone and not afraid uh but then we're talking about some money over here so if you're going into like these DeFi networks and protocols um i just want to make sure you guys understand what's going on with it so you guys could make the, the right financial decisions for you and your family and um i definitely want to make sure you guys win man like at the end of the day like you know we're you know i want all of us to win right so um i know like w one of my homies man Raiden always says man like uh you know like just you know take care of people right uh, make sure that like you know if you have some knowledge that you can pass down um, definitely pass it down and then if you have like different techniques that you can teach people to fish and farm um, so they can fish and feed themselves and farm and feed their their, 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 their family tree bro um, you know definitely you know you want to pass that out right you know you, you know this this knowledge right here it ain't gonna do me good if I die right so like I, I just take all this stuff to the grave and it's just it's just useless right you know I definitely um, you know planning to teach my kids all the information I've been learning in crypto and trading. I definitely want to teach, you know, like my family members over time, depending, you know, if you want to take some of the risk and, you know, jump out of the comfort zone and, 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 and kind of like start investing in, you know, stock market, right? And, and crypto doesn't matter, right? Gold, silver, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so that's all I got, guys, man. It was long. It was fun, I guess, for me. Maybe not you guys, but, like, for me, it was fun. But <laughs> hope you guys had fun, too, man. But uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be coming back and kind of, like, monitoring what's going on. 24 hours, we're going to... I'm going to make definitely another video and start back up where we left off to uh, start claiming some rewards and see what we can do with the extra, you know, monetary value we got off of $290, right? So 2,000 somber we used and see what we can do have tomorrow. Okay, guys, um, that's all I got. To the moon 671, representing new kids on the blockchain. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. And peace out, man. Have a good day. God bless you guys. Later.